You're free. I am. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 differences between the Sandman TV show This is the comics. No, it's too risky for the royals. Wait. Look, if our chat goes wrong, I've got a dead princess on my hand, a demon on the loose, and no one to pay my fee. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the biggest differences between Netflix's The Sandman and the original run of comics. Fair warning, there will be spoilers ahead for both. Let us know in the comments what you thought of The Sandman. Number 10. Dream's Imprisonment In the comics, Dream is captured by a group of occultists, the Order of Ancient Mysteries, in June 1916, following a ritual in which they intended to capture death. I give you a coin made from a stone. I give you a knife from under the hills. Doing so plunges hundreds of people around the world into a sleepy sickness, where they are unable to function in society properly. In the comics, he breaks free of this imprisonment in 1988, after the guards fall asleep near him. You must construct a sphere of glass inside the circle to contain Dream's physical manifestation. This happens in the show as well, but with the setting shifted forwards to 2021. Dream breaks free because he's able to infiltrate the dreams of his guards, and then finds himself transplanted into the 21st century for the first time. Number 9. Characters A big topic of conversation ahead of release was that many of the characters had had their gender, race, or both changed around from what it is in the source material. If I may, sir, it would not be the first time one of the Endless had just- Enough. Now the show is out, we can see that the entire cast is impeccable, however. Gaiman said that the reason for the changes was that that's how he would have written the characters today. This is the characters he originally wrote in 1989. Joanna Constantine! <laughs> Look at you all done that. Among those changed are Lucene, now a black woman, The Halls, Rose Walker, and John Constantine, rechristened Joanna Constantine. And of course, we saw Kirby Hal Baptiste take on the role of Death, which she did marvelously. It's a stellar cast for a stellar show. You are utterly the stupidest, most self centered, pathetic excuse for an anthropomorphic personification on this or any other plane. Number 8 DCU. The Sandman comics take place in the DC Universe. Though the comics eventually phased out overt references to the rest of the DC canon over their long run. My lord, you are the dreaming. The dreaming is you. With you gone as long as you were, the realm began to decay and crumble. However, in the early issues, which the Netflix show is directly adapting, Dream still encounters numerous DC characters, including Martian Manhunter and, again, John Constantine. It was solved in London. Last purchased by a magic user called Joanna Constantine. The show excises Martian Manhunter entirely, and Constantine's character is changed significantly from the version seen frequently in comics and other adaptations. This is also Sandman can stand out on its own two feet and isn't relying on intrusive references to Batman and Superman to tell its story. Number 7. Hal's House Help? Oh, listen to him. Like you helped us against Cersei. Cersei's old business, sister self. And he did bring nice stuff. Number 7. Hal's House Much of the Doll's House storyline is about Rose Walker, the Vortex, and her time spent living in Hal's large house in Florida. Welcome home. Thank you. Oh. How does it feel to be back? 
Cape Kennedy is exactly how I remember it. We don't learn much about her housemates in the comics, beyond a few brief panels and some windows into their dreams, but they're all given beefier roles in the show. Hey, are you Rose and Lida? Hi. Hi, I'm Ken. I'm Barbie. <laughs> It's terrible. We know. <laughs> no longer are Zelda and Chantel unseen recluses, but they're just as involved in life in the house as the other characters. Rose spends a lot more time with Hal specifically as well, talking about his dreams and goals as a character. This makes you more emotionally invested in them and far more concerned about what might happen as the series nears its climax. Chantal and Zelda live upstairs across the hall from you. We possess the largest collection of stuffed spiders in private hands on the eastern seaboard. Oh, would you like to see them? Number six, Lucian and Dream. We don't get much of a sense of the relationship between Dream and Lucian in the comics, beyond Lucian being Dream's most trusted ally and one of the only people not to abandon the Dreaming during his capture. My lord, you are coming back, aren't you? Why would I not return, Lucia? But there's more of a conflict between them in the series, as the other inhabitants of Dream's realm have gotten so used to turning to Lucian for help and advice. I kept a journal for a while. A chronicle of everything that happened in your absence. Dream resents this initially because he's now back and should be the one to whom they direct their concerns. Eventually though, Dream grows as a character and realizes that he shouldn't underestimate Lucian. In the comics, it takes a lot longer to see this kind of development from him. Perhaps just this once, you could ask one of your siblings for help. Destiny would certainly know where your tools are, or desire. Number five, the halls. Hector and Hippolyta Hall are only seen briefly in the comics, with Hector serving as the Sandman in the dreams of Jed Walker. Business class. Yeah, this foundation really wants to meet you. It's not me they want to meet. It was my mom. This role has changed a lot in the show, as we're introduced to Hippolyta as a friend of Rose's independently of her being trapped in a dream for months. How are you? Are you okay? Probably not. No. Why do you say that? Because instead of being back at work, I'm on a plane to London. We also see more of Hector, and he's not trying to be a wannabe superhero now, which makes his relationship with Litter the foreground rather than how it plays out in the comics. You care more about both of them because of this rather than them being a simple novelty, and it clears up what's otherwise a slightly confusing part of the comics. You should be out living your actual life, not having ghost sex with your dead husband. <laughs> Number four, The Sandman. Sticking with the halls, it's Jed Walker, Rose's younger brother living in foster care, who plays the role of The Sandman this time. The first is Galt. A nightmare who, I must say, I never trusted. She is a shape changer, but is not in her nature to be trustworthy. The Sandman is an invention created by Brute and Glob, two of Dream's nightmares, so that they have a Sandman of their own and a Dreaming they can control. In the show, however, Brute and Glob have changed into a new character, Galt, who doesn't have their desire for power. This looks like a job for... The Sandman. Galt wants to be a dream, not a nightmare anymore, and believed she was helping Jed by creating the dream for him. She's still punished by dream for her transgression, however, even though Lucian disapproves. Whoa, King of Nightmares, or I'll send you both to Dreamland. Jed? Number three, Diner Characters. Sandman number six takes place entirely in an all-night diner over the course of a painful 24 hours. As Arkham Asylum escapee John D, played by David Thewlis in the show, taunts the diner's staff and customers with Dream's lost ruby. However, those characters are markedly different in the show, with many of them changed around. Here's my secret. Oh, it's gorgeous. It makes dreams come true. Now, Marsh, previously another customer in the diner, 
is actually the chef and has a history with the waitress Betty. Hi, Marsh. Bet. Have fun, you too. Betty herself is also much younger, though she still disapproves of Judy and Donna's relationship. And the married couple, the Fletchers, look totally different to their comic counterparts. Even Dee doesn't look like himself, largely because in the comics, he looks like a reanimated corpse more than a real person. Oof, look at that burger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've been so disciplined. We don't want to ruin your macros. But it's our anniversary. Number two, Dream vs. Lucifer. Hello, Dream. Greetings to you, Lucifer Morningstar. Dream wants his helmet back, and the fates tell him a demon has it. Journeying to hell, he discovers that the demon is Coronzon, and Coronzon challenges him to do battle. The helm is mine. You must return it to me. No, it's mine now. I traded it from a mortal for a poultry thing. It was a fair trade. Dream disagrees, and there's a crucial difference here. In the comics, Dream does do battle against Coronzon directly, while in the show, Coronzon is allowed to pick a champion, and he chooses Lucifer himself. Apologies, Dream, but the laws of hell demand that I become his champion. This massively raises the stakes and sets up the conflict between Lucifer and Dream, something that will be important in subsequent series if Netflix renews it, as well as making the fight more interesting. We see Lucifer exercise her power and prove she's not one to be trifled with. I am a dire wolf, prey-stalking, lethal prowler. Number 1. The Corinthian The show is adapting the first two major Sandman storylines, Preludes and Nocturnes, and The Doll's House, but because of that, there's no overarching villain. That's why the Corinthian's role is massively beefed up. Corinthian. My creations stay in the dreaming. We see him right at the start, defying Dream just before Dream is captured, and then advising Roderick Burgess on how to keep him contained. Why are you helping me? What, what, what is he to you? Well, you could say that he made me what I am today. And if he ever gets free, he could take it all back. He's in many more scenes and always playing a role in the background, emerging at the end of the series as the series' is big bad. And his final showdown against Morpheus is also a little different, as he has more power at his disposal and definitely seems like more of a match for the Lord of Dreams. The Corinthian. I assumed as much, still feeding on the dreamers he was meant to serve. Yes. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.